Thank you for joining me today. We are in Romans chapter 14 today, and we're looking at the subject of disunity. That has actually been a common problem in our world today ever since the beginning of time, even among God's people. If you'll remember as early as the book of Genesis, that uh, Lot's servants and Abraham's servants were quarreling over water. And as a result of that, uh, there was disunity among them. And Abraham had to step in and be the man of spiritual maturity. We can jump all the way ahead to the New Testament church. And we see really in the passage that we're looking at today, there was a lot of confusion as to uh, the principles of the church. And there was a lot of arguing on what was right, or at least what was the most right. So with this in mind, let's uh, jump right into our passage of Scripture. And I want to begin reading the first 12 verses of Romans chapter 14. Notice what it says here. Paul encourages them by saying, Accept the one whose faith is weak, without quarreling over disputable matters. One person's faith allows them to eat anything, but another whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. The one who eats everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not. And the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does, for God has accepted them. Who are you to judge someone else's servant to their own master? Servants stand or fall, and they will stand, for the Lord is able to make them stand. One person considers one day more sacred than another. Another considers every day alike. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. Whoever guards one day as special does so unto the Lord. Whoever eats meat does so to the Lord. For they give thanks to God, and whoever abstains does so to the Lord, and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives for ourselves alone, and none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. And for this reason, Christ died and returned to life, so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. You then, why do you judge your brother and sister, or why do you treat them with such contempt? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, and every tongue will acknowledge God. So then, each one of us will give an account of ourselves to God. Now, uh, I'm hoping that maybe you noticed uh, some of the beginning arguments that is being made in this passage of Scripture. Let me just share a few thoughts of what we want to deal with in this particular lesson. Uh, realizing that sometimes, even today, Christians disagree on what's best. Realizing this, Paul's instructions in this passage of Scripture, particularly in these first, three, uh, first 12 verses, are that we receive one another. So we receive one another on the basis that, number one, God has received us. We receive one another on the basis that, number two, God sustains us. He, is, he sustains those who belong to him. And number three, we receive one another because Jesus Christ is Lord and we are not. And furthermore, Jesus Christ is the judge and we are not. So, in the first 12 verses that we're looking at here today, we are taught to receive one another. And then later on in the chapter, we are instructed that uh, as Christians, we are to edify one another and build one another up. We'll look at that in just a few moments. And, and then finally, as servants of the living God, we ought to work to please one another. I really believe that even though Paul is teaching that in this passage of Scripture, I believe that that is one area that many in the church fall short on. Uh, we are not all that concerned about building one another up or pleasing one another. 
And, and I, I think that it's to the detriment and even injury of the local church. Let's back up and let's look at the scripture that we just read to one another. Now, I want you to notice uh, it sounds as if Paul is speaking to one specific group here in verse 1 when he says, except those whose faith is weaker than yours. Except those whose faith is weak. This was really some clever writing on Paul's part because it's talking about eating meat that has uh, been sacrificed, uh, uh, whether it's sacrificed to idols or, or uh, uh, things of this nature. Now, in this case, it's saying some of you have chosen to be vegeta vegetarians because you will not eat that meat that's sacrificed to idols. And Paul, in essence, was saying, you know what, an idol is a false god. So if you eat the meat that's been sacrificed to idols, does it really hurt you? That's not a real god anyway. But uh, there were those who were more legalistic and felt that that meat had been contaminated because it had been offered to a false god. So uh, now notice, Paul is saying, hey, if there are those of you, uh, don't condemn the vegetarian because they will not eat that type of meat. And then the rest of you, he's saying, uh, don't consider the Gentiles uh, as being weaker because they do eat meat that had been sacrificed to idols. So notice that in verse 2 it says, one person's faith allows them to eat anything but another person's faith only allows them to eat vegetables. Now, um, Paul goes on later on to say, are you the ones who really should be judging in this matter? Isn't judgment up to God? Now, I do want to give some explanation here. Uh, uh, there are passages of Scripture in Paul's writings to where he tells them to pass judgment. One thing in particular that comes to mind in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, whenever the man is committing adultery with one of his father's wives, uh, Paul tells them, because he's still active in the church, Paul tells them, he says, excommunicate yourself from them. Put him out of the church. And, and so he tells them uh, to, to act very, very swiftly. And also in Paul's writings, he says, that judgment begins in the house of God. And, and so what he's really meaning in that passage of Scripture, if there are people who have accepted Christ as the Lord and Savior, they have made themselves accountable to God and made themselves accountable to the church, and so that when they do openly and publicly sin, Paul says that uh, the church has a right uh, to take a stand because there are things in God's Word to where God has already judged particular things to be wrong. God has already judged certain things to be sinful. Now, what's interesting is, though, in the passage of Scripture, uh, specifically the diet of the Gentiles versus the diet of the Jews, uh, God had never specified one way or the other. We do know that in Acts chapter 10, he gave Peter this fantastic vision uh, to where God has said what God has determined now to be clean is clean. And, and, and so we need to remember that. Now, there was also a huge debate. Uh, one believer believes that there is one day that's more sacred than the other. And, uh, and so there was this debate that went on that, to some degree, is still going on today. So, when do we feel is, uh, what do we feel is the most suitable day for worship? We worship on the first day of the week, right? Why do we worship on the first day of the week instead of the seventh day, like they did in the Old Testament? Well, we worship on the first day of the week uh, uh, simply because that was the day, the first day of the week was the day that Jesus rose again. But did you know that really the disciples, after the resurrection of Jesus, 
they continued worshiping on the seventh day and they added the first day of the week. So they worshiped on both days. Now, uh, many of the Gentile believers, they were taught to worship on the first day of the week like you and I, and yet there were many of the Jewish Christians that observed the seventh day of the week. Some of that is still prevalent in our society yet today. There are some church groups, and I, I would like to specifically point out that uh, many of the Messianic uh, Jewish Christian churches, uh, they, uh, they worship on both the seventh day and the first day. Uh, they typically worship on a, a Saturday evening just before sundown to honor the Sabbath, and then they worship on the first day of the week as well. So, uh, so Paul was teaching, he said, uh, we need to consider every day alike. So, in essence, Paul was saying every single day is suitable for worshiping God. Uh, we do not have to limit ourselves to one day, nor do we have to tie ourselves down to one day. But whenever we worship the Lord, we consider that day sacred and holy unto the Lord. Uh, Paul wrote in, uh, in the book of Philippians, he says, This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and let us be glad in it. Now, whenever Paul made that statement, he applied that to any day. He was saying today is the day that the Lord has made. Uh, he goes on to say, he says, none of us live to ourselves. And so we need to show respect to other people uh, who believe slightly different in certain uh, areas. And, and, and we see this area as being like the day that we worship, uh, or, or in this case, food that's sacrificed unto idols. And so he says, uh, uh, if we are allowed to go on living as Christians, we live to the Lord. And if we are to die today, if we are facing the end of our lives, we die unto the Lord, and we look to the Lord to sustain us from this life to the next. And, and then it's said that all of us will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And uh, this judgment uh, uh, seat of Christ, even Christians will face a judgment. And all of our works will be judged uh, uh, to determine their worthiness in the kingdom of God. And so that's why Paul concluded this passage of scripture by saying, so then, each and every one of us, we will give an account of ourselves unto God. So we read there in uh, verse 13, so because of all of this, let's stop passing judgment on one another. Now, passing judgment about what? Okay, he specifically, whenever he's writing this passage, he points out two things. He's pointing out meat sacrificed to idols, and then he is pointing out what day of the week that they worship on. So, so that's the thing that he's determined. And then also, too, uh, uh, as a result of Paul, I mean Peter's vision in Acts chapter 10, we also now uh, know now that eating pork was not off limits. Uh, uh, for example, eating catfish was not off limits. You remember under the old law, because catfish did not have scales, that uh, catfish was considered an unclean meat. I bet you there's a lot of you that like to go out and have some good fried catfish, and you know I do too. But uh, so we see that was even addressed in Acts chapter 10. And I've already pointed out some of the things that uh, God has already determined that is unholy for any generation. For example, the man who was uh, committing adultery with one of his father's wives. They put him out of the church. Now, I believe in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, they refer to that man again, because there is somebody who was placed under the judgment of the church, and, and apparently that individual had repented. That's why I think it was the uh, one from 1 Corinthians 5. And the man had repented. And as a result of his repentance, he had uh, uh, begun living right again. And Paul says, hey, ease up on him. You know, receive him back into the church. Forgive him. Uh, uh, you have done enough. So, so there comes a point in time 
uh, whenever somebody experiences the grace of Jesus Christ, whenever somebody repents, that's the time to certainly to stop judging them for their past sins. Because the Bible teaches us that our sins have been forgiven and God remembers that penalty of that sin no more. And so, uh, so Paul reaffirms in verse 14 the same thing that uh, God reaffirmed to Peter, and that is nothing within itself is unclean. So, uh, so as a result, we've got to stop passing judgment. So again, in this passage, passage of Scripture, Paul is referring to two things. People's diets and uh, the day of the week on which they worship. And so, uh, so anyway, uh, he's trying to merge the Jewish believers and the Gentile believers together. So in verse 17, he kind of makes that clear and sums all of that up. Whenever he says, the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives human approval. So, in other words, uh, uh, we need to hold one another up. So, because they were holding such a hard legalistic line in all of this, uh, they were weakening each other. And Paul earlier in this passage had said, uh, if there's somebody that you think that their faith is weaker than you, accept them anyway. If they have received the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, you accept them while they learn. Uh, there was a man that I was counseling one time, and again, uh, I, I've shared this story many, many times, but uh, uh, he didn't realize that his lifestyle was, uh, part of his lifestyle was against the will of God. And then he read something in God's Word, and as a new Christian, uh, he determined, I've got to change the way I'm living. Uh, I, I've got to step it up another notch because there was something that was clearly defined in God's Word that had convicted him that he shouldn't live that way any longer. And so uh, uh, it, he changed his way of life. Uh, Paul writes in the book of Romans uh, earlier in this passage, uh, I think about Romans 8, he says, There is now therefore no condemnation for those who uh, are in Christ Jesus, so those who no longer walk in the flesh, but walk in accordance with the Spirit. So, so now notice this. So a person is not condemned anymore. And whenever they realize that there's something that's not in tune with the will of God, uh, they become accountable for that. And they live uh, accountably. And they change their lifestyle if necessary. Uh, have you ever changed a portion of your lifestyle because you realized that there was uh, uh, something that you did? Uh, maybe something you did that you couldn't picture Jesus doing. You know, I, I know that there are uh, people who have told me uh, more than once that they couldn't picture Jesus doing this. Or they couldn't picture Jesus doing that. And so as a result of the fact that they couldn't see Jesus doing it, they stopped doing it as well. <coughs> now notice how Paul continues to go on and encourage them. In verse 19, he says, Let's do, uh, Let us therefore make every effort to do those things that lead to peace and bring one another to a mutual affection. So whatever restores peace in the body of Christ and whatever causes you to love one another. Let me tell you something that hinders your love for one another if you pass judgment. Even on the smallest of things. Now to those of us many years later, we think the Jews and the Gentiles were being trivial in this passage of Scripture. Why would they be so trivial if Jesus died for their sins? But yet it was an honest and uh, they were being, they had genuine concern. They really felt as if they were upholding a portion of God's word. Both sides did, the Jews and the Gentiles. And we look back on it now and view them as uh, somewhat trivial. 
The truth is, we're thinking like a Gentile, which we are. Uh, most of us that are watching uh, this broadcast today, uh, you're a Gentile. And as a result of that, maybe you see some things a little bit differently. Well, let's quit judging. If there is somebody that wants to observe the Sabbath day and represent that day as it being on a Saturday or the last day of the week, then we shouldn't judge them in that regard. And if there are some Christians today who still want to observe the Levitical law, that won't hurt them any. We shouldn't pass judgment on them. Uh, we need to be uh, people who are peaceful and, and we need to lead to one another's mutual edification. We need to build each other up. Maybe another way of putting it is that whenever you account, whenever you encounter a problem within the Church of Jesus Christ, you need to remember not every hill is worth dying on. So the things that we stand up to are things that are clearly definable within the Word of God. And, and if those are clearly explained, then we stand by that. Uh, uh, in verse 20, Paul says, Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All food is now clean, but it is wrong for a person to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble. So uh, this also tells me that uh, we shouldn't do something that um, throws it in somebody else's face if that's an area of life in which they stumble. And, and, and so we need to remember that. It's better not to eat or drink, it's better not to eat meat or drink wine or do anything else that would cause your brother or your sister to fall. So we read that in verse 21. And whatever you believe about these things, verse 22, keep this between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who does not condemn himself by those things he approves. But whoever has doubts is condemned if they eat, because their eating is not from faith, and everything that does not come from faith is sin. So, uh, so we need to remember that, and, and uh, we also need to remember that uh, we need to be careful on the way that we judge other people. Because if we're not careful, there may be non-believers watching us, and they may uh, stumble away from the faith instead of to the faith because of our judgmental attitudes. And then finally, let's look at the last seven verses. That's actually in verse uh, chapter 15, the first seven verses there. And, and, and we see in this passage of Scripture that we are not only to edify one another and build one another up, but we're also to make every effort to please one another. So notice this in verse 15. We who are strong ought to bear the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. So in this passage of Scripture, we are being taught that we need to put the feelings of others first. We need to uh, be very, very considerate. Now, we are to be considerate in only those areas that are not clearly defined by Scriptures. There are some things that are abundantly defined by scriptures, even in New Testament scriptures. Matter of fact, in many of Paul's writings, we can go all the way back to Romans chapter 1. And, and in the uh, Paul list, a number of things that, that God has condemned in his word, even in his New Testament word. And we are to avoid those things. And, uh, and so he makes that very clear. But in some of those things that are more ceremonial, he just says, uh, if you're strong, uh, bear up the weaknesses of others. Each of us should please our neighbors for their good and to build them up. For even Christ, notice this, Christ did not please himself. But as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures. So where do we place our endurance? In what is taught in the scriptures. And the encouragement that they provide, we can have hope. Have hope in what? Have hope through the scriptures. And then he says, may the God who gives endurance and encouragement 
give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had, so that with one mind and with one voice you may glorify the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. Accept one another then. Now, uh, notice again, I want to use that phrase, not every hill is worth dying on. You know, uh, uh, I, I do not believe in a liberal gospel, but I also do believe that there are some things that have not been fully explained uh, in this life and in God's Word, and some of those things have not been fully explained for a reason. And we need to be careful not to judge one another in those particular areas. You know, uh, Paul, Paul's letter to Timothy, Jude, the book of 2 Peter, uh, there are several of those books that give us a New Testament depiction of those things, uh, those sins that we still are to take a stand against. Hey, I want to remind you, that under the Levitical law, if you broke one of these dietary laws, uh, in some cases you would be cut off from people. In other cases, you might be stoned for breaking a dietary law. But whenever Pe Peter saw his vision in Acts chapter 10, all of that began changing. And, and we see that God has now accepted the Gentiles, you and I, and as a result of that, uh, their act of faith was that uh, they received Christ and no other. Whereas the Christians who had been raised in Judaism, they accepted Christ and the law. And, and uh, some of us today, we do somewhere in between. And Paul just simply says that in those particular areas, we need to make sure that we're not guilty of casting a stumbling block in in the front of someone else. I want to thank you today for being a part of this Bible study with me. And uh, in our next lesson, we will conclude uh, the book of Romans together. Thank you for joining in. God bless you.